Hello students, this is Mr. Guy. I'm going to talk to you about paraphrasing. Remember, paraphrasing just means putting other people's words into your own words. Communicating something that you read or heard and putting it into your own words, which shows understanding and also shows good academic honesty. Okay? So before I give you some specific examples, I just want to go through some very quick steps with you that are quite helpful. Okay, step one is read carefully. And this is an important step because we cannot paraphrase what we don't understand. So we need to read carefully and we need to make sure we understand step two. So read carefully and make sure you understand because that's where the ability to paraphrase comes from. It comes from our understanding. Step three, once you've read and understand, go away and take a break. Let the information process let it become part of your brain. This is the way I think of it. It becomes part of your knowledge base. It becomes part of you. And then once it becomes part of you, once you understand it, now you can put it into your own words. Step four, when you return from your nice break, rewrite it, whatever it is, rewrite it in your own words. And here's a key, without looking. Don't have that text in front of you. Write it in your way from your memory and this can be effective okay make sure to change grammar and vocabulary as necessary and then once you think maybe you've rephrased and you've paraphrased check to see the differences compare the original with what you wrote okay look at the difference in grammar and look at the difference in words words and grammar. Here's an interesting website. It's called handymanonline.com slash paraphrasing hyphen tool dot html. I recommend you Google this. Just Google handymanonline.com paraphrasing and I'm sure the website will come up. It's a great way to compare your original text with the one that you wrote. For example, it looks like this. You put the original text here, you know, I like sports. And then here, you might say something like, okay, I enjoy athletics. And you get to check to see the differences. I won't go over all the details now, but you put your, put the original phrase or sentence or paragraph there. And here, you put your version and you you look on the bottom to see some of the differences okay so step six is cite the paraphrased text you still give the author credit and you cite it you don't quote it but you just give it a citation that says that you got the information somewhere else okay and this is important when it's new information if it is common knowledge, then you don't need to cite. For example, you know, breakfast is important. This is common knowledge. Everybody knows it. There's no reason to, to cite that. It's not an original idea. Or it, it, maybe it was at one point, but it certainly is not a, a new information these days. So there's no reason to cite. Okay. Now I'm going to go over an example. Sentence level changes. Here is a sentence. New York City an engaging city with a vibrant ambiance and exhilarating pace is one of the foremost tourist destinations in the world. Now I need, I find that to be interesting information and I'm going to paraphrase it. Again, I'm going to look at vocabulary and grammar. So here's my paraphrased version. I wrote, one of the most popular places in the world to visit is New York. So this kind of takes the place of this. New York is very popular foremost tourist destination means that it is one of the most popular places in the world to visit see it's a tourist destination so it's a popular place to visit to visit is taking the place of tourist destination people love to visit because an exciting and because uh, it is exciting and interesting so that takes the place of this part here where they're saying that it's exhilarating and engaging. 
Well, engaging basically means interesting. Exhilarating kind of means um, kind of means exciting. So again, simply changing words and changing grammatical structure. And in the end, what you have is a paraphrase. Now, let's take a look at a paragraph level. It's a bit different. Paragraph level requires a little bit more work. So here's the paragraph. BPA, a toxin resin found in most plastics, can be detrimental to your health. The International Health Organization has done many studies that support this hypothesis. Many scientists believe that the molecules, although in small amounts, enter the body slowly over time. After years of consuming foods and drinks packaged in plastic, the amount of BPA can be dangerous. Now, this can be tough, but what we need to do is notice which words can we not live without. In other words, which words must stay. We cannot change these words. And I chose these words as unable to change. Can't change BPA because that's so specific. It's a, you, you must have that in order to make sense, to communicate the author's ideas. So BPA, International Health Organization, you can't, uh, there's no other words for that. Uh, in my view, I think molecules um, need not be changed because it's so specific and it's such a scientific and specialist word. Uh, and again, BPA uh, can't be changed. But words like detrimental, like if we right-click detrimental, we see the synonyms are negative, damaging, harmful. So these can be easily done. In fact, if you want, you can just say, you can just say, okay, detrimental, synonym, and I'm going to say damaging. So there you go, damaging. Um, International Health Organization, no. Studies. Now, I right-clicked on studies, but none of these words will be appropriate because here the, the computer thinks it's lessons and training and education, and it's not. But I do know a word, and it could be experiments. Or you may think that this word is not replaceable. See, some words uh, may not be replaceable, and there is some judgment that you can use. But what matters most is that the paragraph feels and reads differently than the original. So words like uh, enter mean like go into. Body, hmm, not sure. Let's take a look. Synonyms. Uh, physique, build, bulk, organization, group, figure, form. None of these, even though they're synonyms, would actually fit this sentence. So like I said in class, we have to be very careful about just using synonyms because we have to use the right synonym. And in terms of this paragraph, body is probably necessary. We probably need it. Consuming foods. Well, that, that one's easy. Consuming foods means eating foods. Okay? To, to consume means to eat. So we can change that. So as you can see, there's some words we can change and some we can't. Dangerous. We can look at synonyms of dangerous. Look at that. Hazardous, treacherous, perilous, precarious. Um, the one that I think is the best is um, unsafe or hazardous. You know, things can be hazardous or detrimental or hazardous, okay? So, or negative for your health. There's lots of ways to do it. The point is that you identify those words that really can't be changed and then identify those words that can and you're halfway home. The next part is changing the grammar. So let's take a look at the paragraph that I paraphrased, okay? Here's my version. I said BPA is a dangerous chemical and according to studies by the International Health Organization it can have negative impacts on our health. The scientific community has done many experiments and believe that the plastic molecules from the food wrappings make it into our bodies slowly. So enter becomes make it into. Yeah, make it into for enter. Over time the amount of plastics increases which can be dangerous to our bodies. Now I'm going to bring up the old paragraph or the original paragraph and let's see if we can look at some differences. 
Um, here, BPA is a dangerous chemical. And according to the International Health Organization, it can have negative impacts on health. Okay, so here it says BPA, a toxin resin found in most plastics, can be detrimental to your health. So detrimental your, to your health changes to negative impacts. Okay. Uh, many scientists believe that the molecules, although small in amounts, enter the body slowly over time. Here I said uh, the scientific community has done many experiments and believe that the plastic molecules from the food wrappings make it into our body slowly. Over time, the amount of plastic increases, which can be dangerous to our bodies. So what you have here is a change of grammar and a change of vocabulary. And of course, notice that some words can't be changed. Some can. Okay, well, that's it. This is a good start to paraphrasing. Look at vocabulary, look at grammar. Know what you can change, know what you can't change. And over time, this will become natural. It will become easy for you. Okay, thank you. And if you have any questions, please remember to ask Mr. Guy. And happy, happy paraphrasing.